morning, so it's a bit dark in here. Um, I'm exposing for the um, the peaks outside. Uh, the wind has dropped slightly, but it's still not um, enough for me to get those reflection shots in the front there. Um, I actually got some nice moody images on the way to where I stayed, which is a uh, um, last night, or well, not last night, the very early hours of this morning. Um, it's a place called Flate, Flatery. Um, I'll put it up because I'll be pronouncing that wrong. Um, so I got those, so I'll put one or two of those up um, this morning. So what I'm going to do now is I've just parked up here. Um, I can't be bothered to get out of the car, as you can tell. And I'm just going to do a pano stitch of um, starting at the peak on the very corner here, which you can just see where my finger is. And I'm going to look around to the end there where it looks down to the fjords. Just trying to get mainly the water in and nothing else. I'm going to be shooting it handheld, uh, doing HDRs, and hopefully they'll stitch together and make quite a nice image. Probably going to be black and white, trying to take out some of these, um, trying to get some of the, the kind of definition or contrast between the, um, the snow and the peaks. Um, see how it goes. If there's any decent colour in the water, I might retain the colour. Um, if I can get a moody scene on it, it might look, look nice in colour anyway, so um, not 100% decided yet. Um, but either way, I think it's going to work in both images. So I'll get that shot now. I'm probably going to put a polarizer on it because even though this probably isn't exposed very well, you can probably see that it is quite hazy out there. The sun is rising kind of that direction and it's putting a beam of haze kind of down across the peaks. Um, which a polarizer should take out. It's about the right angle for it to work. So um, I'll get the polarizer on, um, get some handheld HDRs, put them up. I'll drive around, see if I can find any other locations. Probably won't bother vlogging here anymore. You've probably seen enough of the location um, from some of the clips driving and from yesterday. So if there's anything I can get one here, I'll sling it up, um, try and get a few images. If not, um, I'll see at the next location, which could be anywhere from here to um, going and looking at the puffins. Really. I've got about a three hour drive, so it's quite a way. Um, and there might be a few locations I come across on the way, but it's early hours, it's 10 o'clock. So um, yeah, I've got plenty of time. I'll catch up with you a bit later. <laughs> father's voice he would tell me to move on he would say I'll be just fine yeah he would tell me we have time time to laugh and time to heal a favorite song is on repeat drinking wine until the dawn Right, I'm at Lata Brag, um, where you get loads of puffins. There's loads of people where there's a big car park, so hopefully they're not going to be so shy here, unlike uh, the place I was at a few days ago. I'm just going to take the uh, 7D with um, the telephoto and um, obviously the phone and just something to kind of put it on like a tripod, tiny tripod. I'm going to leave most of the stuff else here. I'm just going to get up there see what I can find. Um, the weather's not great at the moment, but I'll probably um, uh, stay here for a couple of hours to see what happens. Um, might improve. The only good thing with the weather is because it's overcast, it's going to give us nice um, diffused light, which is going to be quite quite nice to capture the um, natural colours of the birds and stuff like that without having any um, harsh shadows. Although it would be nice to get a bit of um, light on them. Yeah, so I'll... Uh, head up there. I won't be doing too much of vlogging really. I'll just try and take some um, kind of videos of the puffins if I can and um, a few various things like that. So uh, I'll uh, catch up with you a bit later. I'm thinking about you.
Right, I found some puffins um, down on the cliff here. Um, you have to bear with me. I'll have to um, take a picture or a bit of video on the phone. Uh, there's quite a lot up here. They're not very shy. They're obviously a lot more used to people. Um, you still got to kind of hang over the cliff a bit to see them. I've just been taking some pictures of the birds coming into land. They're not very predictable. Um, so it is a bit hard to see them because they're black and they're quite small um, they are quite hard to see to the last minute and also they've got lots of guillemots uh, up here um, I think that's what they call the ones with the black beaks and it's really hard to tell them apart until the last minute I've got a few cool shots um, I'm shooting on the 70 to 200 with a 1.4 times extender um, it's the Mark 1 um, so it wasn't too expensive, it set me back about £120, the, ex uh, the extender. The only difference between the Mark I and the Mark II is they flock line the Mark II to cut down the reflections, but it doesn't really make too much difference to be honest. Um, the Mark I is very capable. The Mark III has got lots of software and stuff in it to try and make that better. Um, but again, you're going to be looking at £400 or £300, something like that for the Mark III. So really happy with the quality on it. It doesn't affect it too much. My 1.4 times extenders don't really affect image quality that much. The two times are a different story. Uh, it's obviously my landscape style lens, so it's an f4. Um, so I'm shooting at f5.6 on these. But the image quality is still really nice on it. Um, and all I'm doing is I've got it in AI servo mode shooting at a, a shutter speed of 1200 for the second and shooting about 5.6 to 8 f8 kind of most of the time to get it as sharp as i can really so it's working well um got some really nice shots so far i'm going to stay up here for a bit longer not too much more because it is quite cold up here and um i'll head down to the car then and i'll kind of decide what's going to happen really I'm at the location now. Here it is. It looks an awesome um, thing. It's really cool. It's got a plaque for it as well. It's the oldest steel ship in Iceland. It was built in Norway in 1912, I think. And um, beached here in 1981 if my memory is correct from reading it about two minutes ago. Um, not sure how photogenic it's going to be. Um, it's quite rusty and stuff like that. Um, be nicer if it was a bit more wood on it. But um, you've got a bit of um, kind of nice headland around it and mountains. So yeah, we'll see what we can work. Might be to get a decent image from it. We've had really, really nice, light, beautiful um, kind of sunset colours already on the way here. Um, and it's about an hour and say actually about two hours almost before sunset. So um, hopefully if the clouds stay how they are, we might be able to get some nice light in them. Um, I have a wonder, I have a scout, see if we make it work. Um, see if it's worthwhile staying here for sunset. Um, 
If not, I have got the fuel just to drive back through. I'm going to start heading back towards Retrovic now, so um, I won't be driving uh, very long, but I'll probably drive enough to uh, get sunset out of the way just in case I come across something nice. Um, so it's either that or kind of a hang around here and um, see what this looks like. So I'll go into a bit of exploring and I'll um, catch up with you in a minute. Say I'll be just fine. Yeah, he would tell me we have time. Time to laugh and time to heal. A favorite song is on repeat. Right, here it is from this side. Um, it's actually an old um, whaling ship, apparently. I've done a bit of a research. <coughs> um, it's a bit spooky. It made me jump a minute ago because there's a massive noise on it because this boom, um, which I assume lifted the whales out, this crane type thing, um, is still moving. It hasn't actually seized up and it sways around in the wind. They've got a big creaking noise. Um, Got some really nice um, sunbeams going on up here. It's a bit cloudy, but luckily it's dark enough now with a polarizer and a my hard grad push all the way down to get a bit of movement in the sky. I'm doing HDRs, and um, with that on, um, I'm getting a shot. I think the first shot's two and a half seconds. Second shot's ten seconds. Um, the middle kind of exposure, and the last exposure is thirty seconds. So that's enough kind of slowness to, sh to hopefully get some movement in the clouds, make a bit of a soft image. Um, sorry, a bit of a soft movement in the clouds. It's doing this really funny thing as well. I've got a polarizer on it just because I'm trying to get as much light out of the scene as I can. Um, obviously not having many filters to use at the moment. Um, if you look at this now all along here, you've got this kind of salty reflection on it where um, I think over the years the kind of salt or something's got into the paint if you go and look at it really closely it looks like really oily um, but it's not it's dry it's almost like like a bitumen type oil paint but the polarizer um, and I'll twist this and put it up so you can see is totally cutting that reflection out so it's um, a bit random you wouldn't think it'd make um, too much difference but I spin it now you can see all that kind of glare just comes back into it um, I think I prefer it without the glare really um, although it does make it look a bit kind of cool and rusty with it on there although to be honest it just looks a bit like bird mess in the image um, I think this is the best kind of composition of this boat I think I prefer it to the other side although the other side does have the benefit it seems to have more decay and it looks a bit um, cooler um, there is a bit of light in the sky as well um, it's very very cloudy at the moment and there's quite a lot of haze coming across um, it's very cold as well so I'm in two minds really I probably won't stay here for sunset um, I don't think colouring the clouds is going to do it too many favours I think if it was a sunset and lighting up all this kind of uh, kind of um, fjord and all these um, peaks and stuff, and you had the light on those. I think that would look really cool. But as the sun is over there, it is it's just literally going to set behind these, and all this is going to be dark and in shadow, um, including the boat um, with some bright skies above it. And I think it's just going to be too much um, kind of brightness in the sky, not enough in the boat, and kind of kill it all off really so um yeah i'll probably just get a few more shots as long exposure as i can um and then call this uh, area done and i'm gonna get a move um on back um towards retrovic drive a few hours see what i come across and um if there's anything decent i'll catch up with you um hope you enjoy the images from this location um, hopefully come across something else, maybe a few panoramic stitches of uh, some of the peaks or something like that. Um, hope you found today's vlog um, interesting. I really, really liked looking at those puffins and photographing those. Um, it's something I've not seen before. And um, yeah, they're so friendly up there. They're crazy. You can get within um, meters of them and they just don't seem to care. So 
yeah, cool place. Um, here's a little fact for you. Apparently half of the world's puffins come to Iceland for breeding. And I think even then half of them live close by things at the Westman Islands or something like that. Um, so yeah, real special bird, real cool to see it. Um, obviously not very wild, wild spread around the, the rest of the world. So I know you get a few in um, Anglesey um, by South Stack. But um, last time I was there, we didn't see any. So, yeah, that's this location done. Anyway, I'll uh, catch up with you a bit later on. Um, if I don't catch up with you, hope you enjoy the images. Um, I'll put some pictures up anyway that I get on the way. I'm not sure if I'll vlog it. And um, I'll probably end up catching up with you maybe tomorrow then. And that's probably going to be a bit of a chill day. Maybe get back to. Um, uh, Kirch fell, maybe try and take some other compositions or maybe a few other things, maybe have a look at some of the lava fields as I'm walking, walking, driving that way. So I'll uh, catch up with you tomorrow. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Countryside is so pretty